Hello, my name is Jen Haggerty, and today I will be going over the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act's alignment with GHS. So we'll start with a little bit of background. So the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, or CERCLA, was amended in 1986 by the Superfund Amendments and Reauthorization Act, which also known as SARA. Uh, those amendments did a number of things, uh, and one of them was establishing the infrastructure at both the state and local level to plan for chemical emergencies. So it was the establishment of the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act, which is also known as SARA Title III. SARA Title III has four parts, emergency planning, emergency release notification, hazardous chemical storage reporting, and the toxic chemical release inventory. Uh, today's presentation is focusing in on the hazardous chemical storage reporting requirements. Um, and all of these amendments were triggered by a chemical disaster in India in which thousands of people died or were injured following the accidental release of methyl isocyanate. So what did this really establish? Um, so the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act requires each state to appoint a state emergency response commission. Then those commissions divide the state into emergency planning districts and name local emergency planning committees for each of those districts. The committees are uh, made up of a broad representation of firefighters, health officials, government, industry, emergency managers, um, all of the people necessary to make sure that a proper emergency plan um, is put in place. So if you have dealt with Sarah, I'm sure you've come across these different actionable quantities. Um, First, we have threshold planning quantities, or TPQs, and basically those are quantities that if you have a material at a facility um, above that quantity, then it triggers notification requirements. You might also see reportable quantities, or RQs, um, but those deal more with spill reporting. Um, here I have a little snippet from the uh, Code of Federal Regulation, which just shows how that information is listed. Um, and for us today, it's the threshold planning quantities that we are concerned with um, because they trigger some notification requirements under SARA sections 311 and 312. So under 311, owners and operators must submit a safety data sheet for the hazardous chemicals that they have at their facility above the TPQ. Uh, and that must be submitted at both a state and local level. SARA 312 is a little more involved. Uh, under 312, owners and operators have to submit emergency and hazardous chemical inventory forms. Uh, that's on or before March 1st of each year. Again, it's for the chemicals at the facility that are present above the TPQ, and those must still be submitted at both the state and local level. We have different tier forms. So the tier one forms are general information on those hazardous chemicals, and tier two forms give more specific information on those chemicals. The specific requirements for both of those can be found in uh, the Code of Federal Regulations. So looking at that tier two form, the more specific information, um, currently we have five existing hazard categories under SARA. Two of them are health hazard categories and three of them are physical. So under health, we have look at acute and chronic health hazards. And then under physical, we're looking at fire, uh, pressure and reactivity hazards. Again, the specific criteria for each of those can be found in the Code of Federal Regulations. I'll give a little bit more information on that on the next slide. Um, but why might this be important beyond our uh, Tier 2 reporting? Um, and it, that's because it might have implications for our safety data sheet. So a lot of companies will put this information in Section 15 of their safety data sheet. If you are familiar with the OSHA, OSHA hazard communication standard, you will know that Section 15 is a non-mandatory section because OSHA can't uh, dictate what you are required to put in that section. A lot of it is driven by industry pressure. Um, and Sarah is one of those pieces of information that perhaps 
you want to include in your safety data sheet to help with your reporting, your downstream users want you to put it in your safety data sheet, uh, whatever the case may be, um, it might be uh, a benefit to you to, to list that information there. What I have uh, on the bottom of this slide is just one example of how you might present that information. Um, so we have the title and then just a yes or no answer for each of those five existing hazard categories. You might also just have the title and then a list of the uh, categories that are applicable to the chemical in question. So here is that little more detailed information on those five existing categories. So this is what we are used to seeing, and now we're going to jump into what we're going to start seeing. So the amendment, why we are all here, um, on June 13th of this year, the EPA issued a technical amendment to the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act uh, that became effective the same day with a compliance date of January 1st, 2018. And that amendment impacts the reporting requirements under SARA sections 311 and 312, and it aligns the hazard categories of SARA with the OSHA hazard communication standard classification criteria. So instead of those five hazard categories, we now jump into uh, a much higher number of hazard categories. And if you look at this list, you'll see that it aligns with the hazard endpoints that were implemented in the hazard communication standard. Uh, there are OSHA specific hazards that are also included in this list from the EPA. So the pyrophoric gas, uh, combustible dust, simple asphyxiant, and the hazards not otherwise classified. Those are the OSHA specific hazards which the EPA has also included in their hazard categories. So why amend Sarah? Um, this is one of the first steps to consistency between regulations. So we now have an EPA regulation and an OSHA regulation that reference the same uh, definitions and criteria for classification. So hopefully that makes it less burdensome for companies and industry to comply because they're referencing one definition set and one or one set of classification criteria for more than one regulation. Um, and there is also the hope that the detailed GHS criteria will prove valuable to emergency planners and responders because they're getting a higher level of information for classification categories. So we have covered the what and the why, now the when. Um, Companies are required to comply with this um, new reporting requirements by March 1st, 2018. So that will be for the reporting year of 2017. So starting in 2017, you may see companies start to list out those um, hazard communication standard endpoints rather than referencing the five hazard categories um, that we're used to seeing when it comes to SARA uh, to help them with their 2018 reporting requirements. Um, and the EPA has noted that the forums, instructions, and software, such as the Tier 2 Submit, which is the reporting software for uh, reporting under Section 312, will all be updated to list the OSHA hazard communication uh, standard hazards instead of those five hazard categories um, that we are used to seeing. So here are just some references for today's presentation. Um, the last bullet point is the Federal Register uh, announcement of the amendment to the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act. And thank you for joining me with, for today's presentation. And now we will move on to questions. <laughs>